Okay, dynamic program. In the first two classes, we considered a dynamic optimization problem of the following form. So it has finite horizon. So there is a terminal gate capital P, and it satisfies some time separability conditions so that the objective function is a sum of period returns and at each date the period return or immediate payoff is a function of the current state and the state chosen for the next day. We saw that for such a problem, we can adopt the method of backward induction and convert the problem into the following form. That is, we can start the problem from the end and go backward, and by doing so, we can exploit Bellman's optimality principle. What do we mean by Bellman's optimality principle? Well, suppose you already solved the date t plus 1 problem and found the maximized value at date t plus 1, which of course is a function of the beginning state of date t plus 1. Then you go back by one step and solve date t problem. The maximized value at date t, which again is a function of the beginning state at date t, can be attained by optimally choosing the state for the next date to maximize the sum of the immediate return and the maximum value for the next date. Yeah? That's what we saw in the first two classes. Now, what if the problem has an infinite horizon? After all, many macro models have an infinite horizon, so there is no longer terminal gate, and you are supposed to choose the infinite sequence of case. Backward induction is no longer possible, because there is no terminal gate you can start with. However, although the backward induction is no longer feasible, Instead, the problem can now have a kind of stationary structure. In particular, suppose the period return function can be expressed as some discount factor beta to the power t times a common function f. Suppose also that the constraint correspondence is always the same correspondence gamma. That is, nothing depends on the calendar time t except for the exponent to the discount factor. When that is the case, the problem you face is identical every period. Nothing changes. The only thing that can change at each date is the beginning state. Nothing else changes. The period return and the constraint that you face at the current date, the period return and the constraint for the next date, and those for the day after the next, these don't change. At every date, you solve the same problem with a possibly different state given. To summarize, there is no difference between the situation the agent faces today and that she will face tomorrow, except for the start of date value of the state variable. So we can well guess that the value function v the maximum attainable value as a function of the current state should be the same every period. It shouldn't depend on the calendar time t. Because the problem the agent faces is identical every period. This is a feature of the infinite horizon problem. For the finite horizon problem, this isn't the case. Even if we have this assumption that f and gamma don't depend on calendar time t. That's easy to understand. Suppose the agent lives only for 120 years. Then the problem that she faces at the age of 20 and the problem that she faces at the age of 120 are different because the remaining horizon is different. So for the finite horizon problems, these v functions necessarily depend on the calendar time t. For the infinite horizon problems, the remaining time, the remaining horizon is always infinite. And therefore, 
Together with these assumptions, the problem has a time symmetric structure, and the function doesn't depend on the calendar time p. Now you must understand why we studied this idea of recursion in the last class. Because the v function should be identical every period, denote the common value function simply by v without any time subscript. Then we can guess that the following functional equation should hold. This expression is very similar to the one we had before. One difference is that we have the same v function on the left hand side and on the right hand side. This is the functional equation. This is the Bellman equation for the infinite horizon case. So, for the infinite horizon problems, although we can no longer resort to the backward induction method, instead, we can successfully convert the original sequential problem into the functional equation with respect to v. So, instead of looking for the optimal sequence of k's, we have only to solve the functional equation. Once we understand the functional equation, our next interests would be the exact relation between the solution to the original sequential problem and the solution to the functional equation, when the solution to the functional equation exists, and what properties, continuity, differentiability, increasingness, concavity, and so on, are satisfied by V the solution to the functional equation. These topics are covered by chapter 4 of the Stokey Lucas Prescott textbook. It turns out that obtaining the V function, the solution to this functional equation, is not very difficult because the mapping defined by the right hand side of this functional equation turns out to be a contraction mapping, which means that you can simply pick out some simple function, a constant function or linear function, and do some iteration, and it will converge to the solution function. But that's, I guess, beyond the scope of this class. <laughs>